Hello, my name's Mark and I'm from GCO Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinist to talk about easy ways to visualize between converting between Imperial and Metric. So before I go into how to visualize and convert in our heads, I wanna talk a little bit about accurately converting units. Now there's a very easy way to convert between Imperial and Metric and vice versa. And that is using 25.4. So there's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So if we multiply our Imperial by 25.4, it gives us the metric equivalent. And if we take a metric value and we divide it by 25.4, this accurately converts it into inches. So by remembering 25.4, we can always easily and accurately convert between imperial and metric and back again. So by doing this, we would normally use a calculator because we have that 0.4 there. And when converting accurately, we need to make sure it's perfect because we're working in a machine shop, those dimensions have to be spot on. But when we are trying to visualize the difference between imperial and metric in our heads, we don't need to be so accurate. Quite often when we look at a number, say it's 1.5 inches, we can very quickly look at it and go, that's around 38 millimeters. Now, how do I do that? Well, I originally learned in Imperial um, as a British engineer. And, and then after I finished my apprenticeship, I found I was working in metric quite often. So I had to quickly learn how to convert between these two measurements in my head, just so when I see an Imperial measurement, I can visualize what the rough metric equivalent is. So this is how I done that. So let's start by looking at a thousandth of an inch or one foul. So 0 0.001 of an inch. Now that 25.4 number we spoke about just now comes in again, because this is equal to 0 0.025 of a millimeter. So roughly we can say that one foul is 0 0.02 of a millimeter. Now that helps us visualize in our heads how big we are in metric when we only know imperial or vice versa. So let's take 0 0.1 of a millimeter. Now this equals roughly four thousandths of an inch, but accurately it's 0 0.0039. So we know that 0 0.1 of a millimeter is around about four thousandths of an inch. Now, interestingly enough, this is around about the size of a human hair. Just to give you an idea of how accurate we work to, 0 0.1 of a mil is about the same as the size as a human hair. So when we're working in decimals such as this, we can move our decimal point to give us uh, the same answer. So because we know 0.1 of a millimeter is four thousandths of an inch, we know that one millimeter is 40 thousandths of an inch. Simply by moving that decimal point one point to the left, we can convert this. And again, for 10 millimeters, it would be 400 thousandths of an inch, roughly, not exactly, but roughly. So by remembering just a few numbers, we can quickly convert between one to the other, roughly in our minds, so when we see something that's one inch, we know it's roughly 25 millimeters. Or when we see something that's roughly 25 millimeters, we know it's one inch. Okay, so there is seven conversions I recommend that you remember. Now, everyone learns differently. Some people might like to reference a chart for this and study the chart, or maybe just have it up on your toolbox so you can reference it when you need to. And eventually these conversion numbers will stay in your mind. So it's very easy to do after a few weeks of working like this. So by remembering these conversions, we can quickly add or subtract them together to give us a full range of metric and imperial conversions. And we can do this very quickly in our heads once we remember these seven numbers. So let's start off with 130 seconds. So the metric equivalent to this is 0 0.793. So that's a difficult number to remember. But if we round up to 0 0.8, it makes it a lot easier. Now, again, we're not doing this accurately. This is purely for us to be able to estimate how big these sizes are when we're working with uh, Imperial and converting to metric. So 132 is equal to 0.8 of a millimeter. Now a 16th, that is equal to 1.587 mils exactly, but we can round that to 1.5. So a 16th is 1.5 millimeters. An eighth of an inch is one you'll find you use quite often. So we know the decimal equivalent to that is 0 0.125 if you're working in Imperial. These sizes, you also tend to remember the decimal equivalent also, but the metric equivalent to an eighth is 3.175. So we can round that down to three 
just in our heads to give us a rough estimate of what an eighth is. In terms of quarter, 0.250 in decimal, that equals 6.35. So 6.35 is the number I normally remember for a quarter of an inch, but we can round that down to six millimeters for reference if we need to. So half of an inch, 0.5 in decimal, is 12.7 millimeters. So again, we can call that 13 millimeters, just to give us an idea in our heads that half an inch is roughly the same as 13 mil. Three quarters is the next one we want to look at. That's 0.75 in imperial, and we can round that down to 19 millimeters, because it's not far off. It's only 50 microns different there, or two thousandths of an inch. And finally, we have one inch, which we know is 25.4, because we just spoke about that just now, and we can round that down to 25. So by using these rough conversions, we can picture in our heads how big a part is. For example, if we're cutting a quarter of an inch diameter, you know it's going to be roughly six mil. So we can picture how big a quarter of an inch is now in metric, because we know it's roughly six millimeters. So this chart shows us the imperial fraction, the imperial decimalization, and the accurate metric versions. So we can see here that um, we have many decimal places when looking at one thirty second. There we've got like five decimal places, but we don't need to go that far in engineering. Normally we work to a thousandth of an inch maybe a tenth of a fell, but we certainly don't need to go to a hundredth of a fell unless we're doing some extremely precise, accurate work and very specialist work. Our average machines and our average measuring equipment won't go down to a hundredth of an inch. We would need specialized inspection equipment to measure that far. So this conversion chart shows us the rough equivalent of the fractions, the imperial decimal, and the metric equivalents. So by remembering these, we can round these up or down to the nearest 0.1 of a mil, and then we can work out roughly in our heads what these are. And now we can add these together. Now this is the big trick. Although we remembered these seven, if we want to know what an inch and a half is, for example, we can round that down to 25 plus 13. So we know we're looking at around 38 millimeters. So if you want to download these charts, I've just built a web page on my website, and the link will be below in the description of where you can go to download these charts so you can print them out and put them on your toolbox to help you visualize these rough conversions when you're not used to working in metric when you've been working in imperial so why would we use this well quite often we might be trained in imperial and then we go to a different company and they're doing contract work for a european company for example and they work in metric so switching between imperial and metric when you've already been working in imperial for many years can often be a struggle. But by using my quick reference here and remembering these seven numbers and seven conversions, it helps us very quickly to picture in our minds what the metric equivalent is to imperial. And it also works backwards. If you're used to working in metric and you need to work in imperial halfway through your career, for example, and you need to get used to working in a different measurement system, you can use this to convert metric to imperial to help you quickly learn how to work with imperial when you're used to metric. So if you want to know more about quick machine shop hints and tips when it comes to maths, I have an eight hour maths course over on my website at gcodetutor.com where I also teach GCode programming and CAD CAM.